Hi everyone. So I'm here with the lovely Dr. Mary Ryan. I think Monday we can sometimes say can be a little bit of a, a dull day, but I think I'm having a fabulous day because I had the fabulous pharmacist this morning and now I have the fabulous Dr. Mary Ryan, who I'm sure all of you know, um, one of Ireland's own, loved, loved by many. And um, I, I, I'm lucky that I've known Dr. Mary for a number of years now, kind of because of the menopause circle. And it's a small yeah. circle in Ireland. Um, so yeah. everybody tends to, to know everybody. Um, so, and thanks Dr. Mary for taking the time with us today. No problem. So, no problem. I said Catherine. Um, about a subject close to, I think, everyone's hearts. Um, I think it's, it's very interesting. And I know the research changes day on day, but as it stands right now, you know, it's basically two, two of every three Alzheimer's dementia patients are women. Um, so true. women's health, your key area is obviously crucial in terms of, you know, understanding what we can do on an everyday basis in terms of our health. Mm -hmm. and I guess one of the things that, um, you know, I've been looking at a lot over the last few months is the crucial and important role of the endocrinologist in terms of understanding women's health and our hormones. Um, mm -hmm. So if we can just talk a little bit about that in terms of, you know, the role that you play in women's health, you know, for people who maybe aren't even familiar with the role of the endocrinologist. Don't worry, of course, Catherine, I'm delighted. So what endocrinology means, it's the science of hormones. So as I always say, and Catherine, you've heard me say on numerous occasions, people forget that hormones control everything. So they control all your muscles, they control your immune system. So if we think we're skeletons covered entirely by muscle, all of those muscles need a hormone. And that hormone comes from the hormone control center right up at the top of the nose. So they're absolutely critical. And But what we must remember is that they also control the immune system. So I think for we've only really been finding out, we knew about certain hormones, but when we saw that women were getting more what we call autoimmune disease, and that's where mm -hmm. the immune system attacks itself, we began to thinking, look, it's different for the sexes and we need to look at this. And one of the things we saw was women, you know, if we look at women behavior, female behavior, um, yes, we have a puberty, uh, we have a complete difference to men. We've got menses every single month, right? And that takes a huge lot out of, of the pituitary gland. There's a whole hormone flux going on. And it's fine if you're doing well, but some women aren't, and they've got very heavy periods, which drains out that pituitary gland, and they've got what we call, you know, one of the hormones, FSH, just over-secreting. So those women tend to, to get very, very tired, and that affects their endocrine system. And it's a knock-on to their adrenal glands and to all their, their other glands. It even is a knock-on to the thyroid and the lipids. So women, because we're the way we're designed with menstruation every month, perimenopause then where there's a whole fluctuation and the hormones and the FSH is, is going up and the pituitary gland isn't able for that. And then menopause where it rises again. And that really hammers that hormone control center. And then you find the hormones drop at every nerve muscle junction. That's why women get aches and pains. That's why they don't sleep well. And of course, lack of sleep, Catherine, is, cr oh. is critical because the hormone control center can't operate if it's not recharged, just yeah. as we can't operate if the phone isn't done so and one of the things and I was delighted that you got involved in this because I was forever hearing of, of women that were suffered dreadfully 20 years ago from menopause and perimenopause but people just wrote them off and they didn't listen yeah. whereas now I think because we have spoken about it very openly it's allowed women come forward and given them permission to say hang on this is real this is what I'm suffering I'm not depressed I'm not yeah. you know to be, to be locked up or whatever Ever, which is what happened unfortunately years ago so I think that that's a very good development but so just going back to so the endocrine system controls everything the hormone system controls everything it controls all those synapses that from each cell that create memory it controls all the muscles all the immune system so if there is a hormone flux as there is very much in women because of the whole menstruation thing because of the fact that we overdo it yeah. because of the way society is designed 
and because we've an unequal society and you know all of this affects the, the hormone control center which controls everything so i suppose what we've been trying to do is not only educate women about the endocrine system and the world in general but also telling women to value themselves because the more recharged they are the better their hormonal system does and the more likely they are to do very well and that obviously controls everything Catherine. And I think that's a huge um that's a huge part of I think the process in terms of looking after your brain health mm. is you know it is taking the time to look after your your own health and you know I so guess part of that like you say is there's definitely um like the, the caregiver burden that women can take on and I think it's like we need to start maybe shifting it that we're actually looking after ourselves more um, oh. you know, so I, and I think that's I think that's that that's starting to happen we probably need more of it um, I think, so, yeah it needs, it needs to go a lot more Catherine I would see it a lot in the hospital where women are continuously being asked to care for their parents and the, the, the even we have to change the way mothers think mothers tend to you know don't ask the son but ask the daughter I remember a case just last week where a lovely woman said to me she was 10 miles away and the mother didn't ask the son who lived beside her to, to oh, give him the shot right she asked the daughter who was 10 miles away now the daughter who was 10 miles away said ma'am I can't I'm 10 miles away you're going to have to ask my brother oh but he's too busy and she said but I've got three children he's only yeah. got one and yeah. it's weird so you know we, we just need to change how mothers treat their daughters as well and to teach society to value women equally because that is I think what leads to the burnout is that unequal treatment of men and women we, we need yeah. to do a lot of work on that and I think that's down to, I think, you know, I've just come back from, I was minding my mum at the weekend and I brought, I have three boys, so I brought uh, one of my sons with me. And I actually think as difficult as it is for him to see his granny with dementia, it's mm. actually, there is an element of it that's character building because he sees what I'm doing and like he was making her cups of tea, he was holding her arm when we went for a walk and just, Fabulous. you know, I just, I think all of that is important in terms of, there's there's the whole aspect of the roles being the exact same and there's also yeah. the aspect of you know children learning to what it's like to care for an older relative who has dementia absolutely. or, or else absolutely, um, absolutely. Catherine, yeah. I just wanted to mention before I forgot, um, low estrogen affects memory and hormone imbalance affects memory. And women often ask about this brain fog and I just wanted mm -hmm. to touch on yeah. it. So for example, when women get overtired, that, that then will cause a hormone imbalance, particularly low estrogen and, uh, in, in particular, because often they don't ovulate when they're overtired. And the low estrogen will cause a sort of a brain fog around after having a baby. If women are very tired, not getting yeah. sleep, a lot of them, for a year will we'll complain of poor memory and they'll worry about getting dementia and actual fact that is just where the pituitary gland is really tired and also there is a estrogen imbalance yes so yeah. just to reassure people that are looking in that you know that, that that's not dementia that is yeah. just a hormone imbalance and there's a lot you can do for that and the first thing is rest yeah and i think so that's Mary, that extends into perimenopause, doesn't it? Because I mean, the amount of women that I hear from who basically, God, Catherine, I'm losing control. I can't remember. I'm definitely on the of dementia. And in a lot of cases, part of it is, yes, it's the declining estrogen and it's the symptoms that we see in menopause. It's not that, you know, I think it's important, like you're, you're saying there, it is important. You don't, like there's nothing saying that that means yes you'll have dementia um or Alzheimer's exactly. you know exactly know that. it's just assure them that that's quite normal yeah. and that in all in almost in all cases it will get better but the one big thing is they've got to rest and they've got yeah. to pace you do very well because your pituitary glands will recharge and that the body is very good at looking after itself if it's rested enough to do so and the big problem with women is they don't rest enough and yeah. they don't put themselves first enough and that's one of the big problems yeah particularly perimenopause menopause and after having a baby you know yeah that's one of the yeah. things and i guess when you think like they're all very demanding times particularly you know after you just had a baby obviously you're slap bang into the new baby day absolutely absolutely 
yeah. with menopause, the chances are like I'm 49 now, I'm right in the thick of it. Um, yes. And I've got the sandwich years, so I've got my kids and I have my mum. So it ends up, you're juggling everything. You're juggling. So, but the most important thing is, you know, Catherine, from all the talks we've done is that, you know, you take the, the natural supplements, you have the diet very good first, but that you pace and that you, you really rest. Yeah. Never yeah. more so was it important than a perimenopause and menopause years that you've got a pace. Yeah. And even just going back to um, women after having a baby, one of the things I always say to women is, while, bottle, while breastfeeding is fabulous and it's the ideal and what we would like women to do, it's not for every woman. And I think it's very important we get that message across, Catherine, because I have women coming in that are crying because breastfeeding isn't going well and they're really struggling and it's not made for every woman and it's very important that women know that because I think women feel that they're pressured into it and they feel people will look down on them if they don't that they're a bad mother and that's nonsense yeah. you know Compact. a lot of us would have been exactly no. so yeah. I've always say you know when I have a pregnant woman in front of me I say look at it might be for you it might not if it's not for you don't feel guilty I was bottle fed and I turned out fine you know <laughs> and I think <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yes yeah I think it's very important because a lot of women come mm. in to me crying in tears not sleeping baby hungry etc and I think it's an important that we don't feel that push everyone down that street because not everyone it's not suitable to everyone yeah that's very important yeah big, big time and as you say we, we sometimes have enough guilt without putting you know that mm. guilt on top you know we're, we're absolutely on our own with it <laughs> this is it now you said it yeah and women we sort of feel we should to be super mums, dad don't feel the, the, the thing to be super dad. We almost feel like we have to prove ourselves, which we need to get rid of too. You know, yeah. we've yeah. gone through the nine months of pregnancy, we've done amazing. So, you know, you don't don't feel that you're you're letting anyone down but not breastfeeding. You know, that that's the key. And and what are your thoughts in terms of um I'd like we we'll talk in a few minutes kind of about you know diabetes, heart, etc. Um, what are what are your thoughts in terms of um with hormone replacement therapy, you know, obviously there are some women who really suffer with the symptoms. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So Catherine, I'm all for keeping everything as natural as possible. So there's a certain amount of women that thankfully, you know, get through menopause with the, the good dietary advice of eating healthily, getting mm -hmm. plenty of the omega-3, the vitamin D because of the bone health, make sure their calcium is good on their diet. You don't have to supplement calcium once you have the yogurt, the cheese, the, the milk in your diet, right? And we're getting... Uh, exercise not strenuous just enough okay mm -hmm. and keeping their energy levels at 10 out of 10 so that would be the first thing and then you would say take natural supplements like clean marine which has got the b6 the b12 which is very good for nervous function your omega-3 your natural phytoestrogens and your vitamin d okay mm -hmm. and then you get a certain group then that that need hrt so mm -hmm. i would always say to women the women that come in to me are the ones that are absolutely flushing sweating they're really yeah. severe it's not just the odd flush so yeah. i always say to women you know i often get women ringing in when i'm giving a, um, a talk on a radio show and they they ring in and they say but i flew through it but like they might have flown through but that doesn't mean the next person is going to yeah. you know yeah. we're all so, so different when it comes absolutely. to menopause Absolutely. I mean, I, I get the severe case. So I get the women who get severe anxiety, severe flushing, severe sweating. And the reason I talk about that is I want the women that are suffering to know that that's normal for them yeah. and that we can treat that with HRT because yeah. of the very low estrogen and that gets rid of the vaginal dryness and the swings and the flushing and the sweating. Because remember, with all that, they can't sleep. So yeah. their, their hormone control center that's is getting harder and harder. Exactly, and, and that whole uh, it is flushing and sweating is just getting worse because the adrenal gland is getting tired and that's creating excess adrenaline when it gets tired. So there's a whole vicious circle going on. So the whole thing is to get on, on top of that. And then there are also medications we can use for the peripheral nerve pain that people get. So yes. th that's the lovely thing, Catherine. There's so much out there now that women didn't have before. Yeah. And it's to educate women about that. And I think that's that's like, you know, what we're all trying to do is trying to mm -hmm. educate women with the facts in terms of yeah. you know, obviously it's it's not a conversation in terms of um looking at you know all the research around HRT and the cancer scares and so forth. That's a much bigger debate. But the bottom line is HRT today is very different to the HRT that was around 20, 30 years ago. 
you know. Totally. And I think we always pick our patients, Catherine. So, for example, if there were, if you had a family history of breast cancer, we wouldn't be giving you HRT. But there's other therapies there, you know. So we always discuss it. And obviously, the, the, we, what we want is the best for the patient. So that's the that's the reality. So I we will always, um, you know, people need never be afraid because obviously I'm not going to give HRT to somebody who's had a family history of breast cancer. But there's other alternative therapies out there for that yeah. patient. Yeah. And that's yeah. the key. And I think that's I think that's the the key. I, you know, I, my my thing would be we've only one life and we cannot suffer every day. Absolutely, absolutely. Whatever works for every woman. I think you know. Yeah. Is, yeah totally totally and everyone is very individual and we can't judge on any different person because yeah. they could have severe symptoms and someone else could be sailing the yeah. other thing i wanted to mention was there's a lot of oh sorry now somebody's ringing there and i'm just declining them so sorry if it's coming across <laughs> there um but catherine one of the things for brain health is to keep your blood pressure normal remember that we've got two main arteries going up to our brain right yeah. and the one thing the brain needs is oxygen so you know, I always say to patients in a cardiac arrest situation, the one thing the brain survives on is oxygen. So we've got to keep those two carotid arteries, which are the two pipes carrying oxygen to the brain. We've got to keep them pretty open, right? Now, what can, what can close them up is plaque. And the cause of plaque are five things. One is weight around the tummy, which women around menopause are very prone to getting. Yeah. So women be very careful that they reduce their carbohydrates and they reduce their sugars because sugar is, is quite toxic anyway and I'm always saying keep the confectionaries to once a week um, but definitely don't have abdominal weight because the fat there causes plaque in these arteries that reduces your blood flow and that causes brain atrophy which has been shown to cause both Alzheimer's and uh, senile dementia Catherine and I'll go through that in a minute the other thing would be diabetes so yeah. it, it, diabetes that's fine but just make sure it's well controlled because well controlled diabetes you won't get the, the plaque and the other uh, thing with, sorry mary with the diabetes as well it's it, it, would you recommend that you know uh, women are taking regular having regular checks with their you know whether it's their gp endocrinologist whoever just yes. to ensure that they're not moving towards uh, type 2 diabetes Absolutely. Absolutely. So if people have, have weight, you know, you are at risk of type 2 diabetes. And if you're thirsty and if you're very tired or if you're going to the toilet a lot, passing urine, these are all symptoms of type 2 diabetes. So easy to treat it. So just don't be suffering and don't be putting yourself at risk. The other thing, Catherine, is high cholesterol. Now, some of us will inherit that. So 50% of the Irish population, and this is where women, I, I was on the Irish Heart Foundation Women's Committee purely because we all heard about men getting heart attacks, but there was no information about women getting heart attacks. And women are at the same risk as men and even higher after mm -hmm. menopause. And it's very important that women know that because women get chest pain and they don't think, they think it's indigestion and they don't go to for checkups like men do because there's been such a talk about men and getting heart disease. Women forget that they have the same risk and even higher in their 50s after menopause. So and that's something is, that, yeah. Is it right, Mary, that the symptoms of um, a heart attack in a, in a woman are very different to in a man? Totally. Totally. Very good point, Catherine. So women don't always get chest pain like men do. They might just get uh, an aching chest or they might get shortness of breath. So, you know, that's the, that, that's the big problem You're there, Catherine. Sorry, I'm yeah. trying to stop the person ringing and they just keep ringing. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, so yeah, that's the big thing. But the, the key thing is that if you have a high cholesterol, don't just think, you know, a lot of patients come in to me and say, Dr. Ryan, I'm eating healthy, I'm doing everything and it's still high. If your cholesterol is still high, then you will need to have it treated. Mm -hmm. Because some of us, it's nothing to do with diet. It's got to do with the fact that the liver is making too much. And if that's genetically in you as a woman, it, the, the, you, you get it after menopause. That's when the estrogen protects you. But the minute you, you become menopausal, you lose that protective effect. And then that, that LDL receptor defect, which just pumps out all the bad cholesterol, comes on board. And that just clogs up the artery. So just to, to make note of that. Yeah. Um, so your diabetes, high blood pressure is the other one. Make sure your blood pressure is normal. If you have high pressure, you're going to cause yeah. plaque on the arteries. You're going to cause atrophy. So we've mentioned abdominal obesity, diabetes, hypertension, oh. high cholesterol, and smoking is the other one, Catherine. Yeah, that's so, a huge one, isn't it? And even as it, it it's uh, everywhere you read, everywhere it just it's not it's not it's not a, it's not a superfood. <laughs> no, it's not. 
it's not. And I suppose, again, I think when, when what we need to do is women traditionally, you know, the, 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 people smoke because they can't, you know, it's a coping mechanism, isn't it? So I think what's wonderful is that we're now, there's way more support for women, Catherine, because we're talking about the issues yeah. and we're trying to solve them. And therefore, they might not feel the same need to, to smoke. So I think as we are creating a more equal society and valuing women and saying, hang on, we're trying to deal with all the issues and help women and help women support themselves and others hopefully women will feel the less need to smoke the smoking really i always challenge my patients on this i say look at go and do meditation go and do but it, it is you have to identify the smoking is an escape mechanism but yeah. you have to find some other yeah. methods of escaping you know I, it was funny i was watching doctor in the house last night in rt and there was yes. um, there was they're a young couple they're trying for a, a child and his sperm count on the first check was quite low and below the threshold and a lot of it was because of smoking so they got him to tweak his lifestyle they were, he was doing other things like exercise and so forth yes yeah. when he, they went back to review um he cut it down by a certain amount but even the small change in the smoking that he'd made increased his sperm counts now i know i'm just yeah, talking absolutely. absolutely yeah it's so and even important Totally, totally. And even things like magnesium, Catherine, is a great supplement that women can take as well. And that's really good to, to help hormonal health, but also it helps to relax muscles and help sleep, particularly yeah. around menopause. Yeah, and, yeah. and menopause, so it's a good thing. Yeah, but if, if you look at those five things and you try and modify them, then you, you basically don't, you have plaque in the arteries, so therefore you don't produce blood flow. And they believe that that low, that hypoxia or low oxygen is what drives Alzheimer's and senile dementia. So Alzheimer's is, what, you know, what we were talking about before we came on, where you've got this amyloid plaque, we think it's genetic, and you have these tau proteins. And that, that is quite early dementia, so you see it from 55 onwards senile dementia is usually from 70 onwards mm -hmm. and that's the one that we can really make inroads and in by keeping all those risk factors low that we've just spoken about and I, yeah. I think one of the things that i i guess started to talk about you know when i'm doing talks and so forth is that whilst we're all um managing our menopause symptoms I now have really started to rethink in terms of, yes, you're managing your menopause symptoms, but what we've also got to do is we really have to start setting ourselves up for success in the future. So totally. like doing all the things that you mentioned there to make sure that we're protecting our hearts, we're protecting our, yes. you know, our exactly. bodies for the future. Exactly. When you're in menopause, you can get very tunnel visioned in terms of the symptoms of menopause and obviously totally. when when they're very tough you know that it, it is hard to see beyond that but i i think it's becoming even more critical because we're living longer that we're starting to um look more at how do we protect ourselves in terms of totally totally and and i think as women we're valuing we're valuing ourselves better as well i think our whole value system has improved catherine and obviously it needs to be we need to up that a lot more but i think women are valuing themselves more in society that's why they're they're beginning to you know before years ago women just didn't they didn't dress well in their you know in when they got past menopause whereas women are and it's lovely to see and they're realizing that yes i can have a life post menopause and i can enjoy and i want to do loads of different things and i think you know the value of women has changed considerably since my mother's time which is a good thing but we have to drive that even more one of the things i'm always saying is keep your surname when you get married maybe consider a double barrel name as well because <laughs> these are all things to, to help the value of women in society i i think it's very important yeah because no, that, I, I drives, know that, from... that drives you know or good looking after yourself keeping that hormonal system normal if you value yourself and you can't do that unless society values you so you have to do that yeah yeah so so say um mary for anyone that's listening and has concerns about oh gosh you know uh, depending whatever stage they're at and they are thinking you know what what do i need to do in terms of the actual <laughs> steps you know uh, um to see doctors and so forth um around 
protecting themselves against dementia or whether they think they might have it. What would, okay. what would you say, where, where, where to start? Where would they start? So, so first of all, go to the GP and request a blood test. So I would get a full, a full set of blood tests, Catherine. So your, your, your uh, full blood count, your liver function, your thyroid, your cholesterol, um, particularly a, a full set of lipids. I would want the glucose to make sure, a fasting glucose to make sure that you have some diabetes and then uh, and, and high blood pressure and a weight check. So that would be the first thing to do all that. Then mm. if, if the, the GP will do a thing called a mental test score, which will check you know, what you should be and, and what, the, what, when, what it would be if you got into dementia range, where we'd be concerned, right? And Sorry, then, what was that called, Mary? So a mental test score. Oh, yes, so yes, it, it's yes. basically an exam of mental test function where you have to do, you know, we ask a set of questions and oh, 25 to 30 is normal. And then, you know, under 25, say, is, is where you suspect that they might have Alzheimer's or, or um, dementia. So from then on, we would maybe do a brain scan. So they would refer them on to, to the hospital. And then you would get, get a brain scan done looking to see, for example, some people might get many strokes and that's what would be damaging the, the, the brain. Um, and th these people would have high cholesterol or they might have an irregular heart rate. So they'd be all the things that we would be checking. Um, so the, the, we might see, for example, on the brain scan, whether did they have the plaque that you get with Alzheimer's or was it more senile dementia picture where they've got a lot of ischemia on the brain and little white lesions. So th that's really the big thing to sort of do the basic bloods, but then they refer you on to the specialist to check for the brain scan and so forth. Yeah. And what are your thoughts on the... Um is it the, the, the APO tests, you know, for the genes? Yes. Um, I, I, what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I, Catherine, the whole Alzheimer's field and dementia field is getting so much research. It's, it's just mm -hmm. a phenomenal. I suppose the big thing is I like to see things, proper evidence-based medicine. You, know, we see, you see one study and you, you, patients come in and say, Doctor, what do you think about that? I always say, look, wait and see, because I, I personally wouldn't put anyone on something or, or go on down a certain route unless I saw it properly evidence-based. So I, I always say that to patients. So for example, we were talking earlier about the estrogen, you know, the, the studies about using estrogen to prevent Alzheimer's. And certainly they look very promising in that the estrogen and some of the studies in 2019 Show that you reduce the, the accumulation of the tau protein and you reduce the accumulation of a thing called amyloid, which is what you get in Alzheimer's. But it's only one study, Catherine. So you can't go on, on just one study. You need to see a lot more and you need to see the results similar and you don't want mixed results. The, the APO test, yeah, certainly, the, the, it wouldn't be my first line, Catherine. I, I would check I, everything else, yeah. I, you know, I've been thinking about it a lot over the last while and... Hmm. I could go and get the test done because of my mum mm. and it could say, yes, I'm ticking it. I have the gene. Yes. But then I thought, do you know, personally, now this is such a personal view. I actually don't want to know. Yes, so, exactly. Because if you have the gene, I think I've read somewhere that even if you have the gene in X number of cases, only 60% of them actually went on to have um, yeah. dementia so I yeah, guess there's I a be certain thinking, amount of them expressed exactly yeah so I'm like okay it's only mm. going to it's not really going to do anything for me because it's not going to say yes definitively I will have dementia and even if exactly. there was a test out there that told me that I don't think I would personally want to know because I think now I'm doing everything I should be doing and absolutely there isn't anything more I uh, absolutely absolutely and, and that's what i'm saying catherine you know the, the whole thing where we found that hypoxia or, or low oxygen uh, to the brain could be one of the triggers for alzheimer's as well as senile dementia it's been yeah. massive because now we can tell patients look it's up to you we've got a, you've got a personal responsibility that you can keep if you keep your weight right if you keep your blood pressure right you, you make sure your diabetes is well controlled you make sure your cholesterol is under five and you make sure you're not smoking so all those things will 
stop the plaque, reduce hypoxia or low oxygen, have the flow to the brain normal, and you don't get the atrophy. And if you don't get the atrophy, not only have you reduced risk of your Alzheimer's and your senile, but you also don't get your Parkinson's. Because remember, Parkinson's is atrophy of the dopamine cells. Do you get me? Mm -hmm. So I think what we advocate is, is just for people to understand all of this, and they could do so much for their brain health by just keeping all of these factors constant. Yeah, that, that would be a yeah. huge yeah yeah um and so and i suppose that's real love for ourselves catherine because if we do <laughs> we really love ourselves we should be doing that shouldn't we yeah, yeah big time yeah. Big time i i was doing um, an interview with emily power smith last week and we were talking okay. all about that and just the very yeah. physical side of it and uh no it was yeah. fantastic it was very empowering it was great I- I, lo- I loved her. I loved her comments on the whole, um, you know, uh, of the way it's opening up for women and they can now talk about it. I thought she was excellent. Yeah, yeah she's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, so Mary, in terms of just, you know, what would you say? What are if you had, you know, someone in front of you who has concerns? Um, you know, or they want to look after their brain health. And I know we've discussed a lot of this, but yeah. what are the top three things you would say? So the top three things are to keep themselves, to, to be well rested, Catherine. Okay, because yeah. to be well rested, your pituitary gland or hormone control center is, is at its optimum. And that controls all your immune system, your autoimmune, it controls everything. So to be well rested, to have a good healthy diet is key where you've got loads of the greens, loads of the colored vegetables, very low in sugar because sugar is toxic to the hormonal yeah. system. Yeah. Keep that very low. And and so, so one is well rested because that's when you're present. Two is the diet, you know, make sure you've got plenty of roughage, keep your carbs low because as women, we have a slow metabolism. We, a lot of us have th- yeah. under of thyroid slow metabolism again so if you keep that right then it'll be so that would be the diet must be good low in sugar um and then just exercise but just to be for fitness i don't want people overdoing it because yeah. the people that come to be overdoing it end up having severe exhaustion pituitary fatigue and they're all the ones coming in with, with illnesses and thyroid disease so it's it's about getting a proper balance so i would say uh, eat healthily sleep and exercise in my and most of all love yourself because if you love and value yourself you're going to make sure you do all those things yeah, and that you, be, you know i very think that's true. the key and women are poor at that and we need yeah. to really up our game with that yeah yeah and i think across the board when you read all the cutting edge research when it comes to um um alzheimer's i think one of the number one is sleep is the totally Oh, totally, Catherine. Yeah, if you don't get your sleep, yeah. your brain can function. The hormone control yeah. center that controls everything has to be recharged. Just like our phones, we plug them in and we use them all day, but we, we think that we can go on, on empty and we can't. And sleep yeah. is critical, you know, and, and it, you just stop that whole vicious circle of occurring, which, which is key. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've never yeah. been to charge our phones. <laughs> That's it. We don't, you know, and I, I always say it to women as well, and women are terrible at this. Don't get overtired. You know, women potter until 10, 11 o'clock at night. Um, and that's so wrong because if you get overtired, it's very. So I'm always saying to women, stop at seven. Just, yeah. you know, whatever is left to do, just let it delegate, learn to get delegate, have a rota, but don't go to bed overtired because overtiredness means your shoe stand is wrecked, means the hormones are completely off. And then if the hormones are off, the muscle can't relax because remember hormones control muscles. And then it takes you three and four hours to get off to sleep. And that's a disaster. Yeah. So it's, it's about, yeah. I, I'm glad you said that, Mary, because you know what? That's one thing. I see so much of where women don't put the link between having a very busy day and a stressful day to the fact mm. that the sleep then suffers. Absolutely. And I'm trying to explain, well, your cortisol is, is you know, everything Absolutely. Up and, you know, your sleep will suffer as a result of that. Totally, totally, yeah. So that to- tool down rhythm is, is completely off. And if, if you get overtired, you just cannot do it. And it's because that hormone control center just is whacked and, and you've overdone it and hormones are off and, and then the whole synchronization is off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mary, thanks so much for taking the Not time. Not at all. As always. Not, always, as always, Not uh, at all. Not um, at all, Catherine nice to educate and that's what's so important yeah yeah no it's it's fantastic fantastic uh thank you very much you're so welcome we'll chat soon
Lovely, Catherine. Lovely to talk to you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.